Greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. God's love is all-encompassing. If you hook up with Jesus Christ, you will win. Your life will turn around. He's a God of 360. He never fails. He's the God of love, and love never fails. Hi, my name is Bruce, and I'd like to welcome you as we continue on our journey following him wherever he leads. I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 to you. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. And I know, now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13.5. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is the message for you today. God's love. God loves you. God wants to have a relationship with you. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to show who he is and to pay the price on the cross for your sins. In John 3.3, 3, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He went on to say later in the chapter, Marvel not that I say you must be born again. And this message is for everyone. For all of those, whether you're a church person, whether you belong to the Christian faith, you must be born again. And the question is, do you want to see the kingdom of God? Because Jesus did say, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
So how do we become born again? How does this start? What do we do? It begins by hearing the Word of God and believing it. That's where it all starts. Now various churches will teach various things. But the most important thing is that you give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. You ask Him to come in and to be your Lord and Savior. You know, once you believe and receive Christ, your spirit, the Holy Spirit comes in with your spirit, and you literally come to life. And, and you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And that's what it means to be born again. Now, if you've been baptized, but never have received Christ, and have not been born again, have not received Jesus Christ, have not received the Spirit of God, then you need to be born again. This is the message today for you. You must be born again. When you're born, your body is alive, your soul is alive, but your spirit is not. And the reason it is not is because you are dead in your sins. See, the wages of sin is death. And sin separates us from God. It completely removes us to where we cannot be in the presence of God. For if we were to be in the presence of God, you know, standing with Him face to face, we would die. So what do we do with this? Can we get rid of sin in our life? Can I just stop and start doing good things? The, the, the first question to ask is, do we really know, do you really know, do I really know what good is? If you go through the Old Testament, you have the Ten Commandments. You have the law. Can we completely fulfill the law? The answer is no. And this is something to, to wholly understand. We can never be good enough on our own to get to heaven. We can never be good enough on our own to have a relationship with God. Now that doesn't mean God doesn't love us, because He does love us. And God is willing to forgive our sins because of what Jesus Christ did. And God is willing to make us a new creation in Christ Jesus because of what Jesus Christ did. See, this is why Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by Him, because He is the only righteous man who ever lived from birth to death. He fulfilled the law of God. And when he was nailed to the cross, he was an innocent man. That's why he's called the Lamb of God, because he was a pure sacrifice. And it was God's will that Jesus lay down his life for our sins and for the sins of the world, for the sins of mankind. And it seems like it might be a brutal thing, but it was the greatest act of love that anyone could ever do. Jesus said in the book of John, greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. And listen to that, charity vaunteth not itself. Love does not put itself first. 
And that's what you need to think about. God did not put himself first. He put us first. He put you first. And you need to know that you are loved. You need to know that you are cared about. That what happens in your life matters. It matters to God. It matters to the Lord Jesus Christ that you matter, that you count. We get down. This world is, is very hard to live in. We go through tragedies. We see things happen on the news that are very difficult to understand. We see people getting murdered. We see people's lives literally getting wiped out by hurricanes, floods, earthquakes. The world is in a constant state of turmoil with the violence. We live our own lives and we go to work and we come home and we raise our families and sometimes it's easy to block everything out that's going on. It's easy to, to just shut it out and not think about it. But then it comes right back and it slaps you in the face. And you know that there's not a real solution. except through Jesus Christ. And that's why this message today, because God knows you're anxious. God knows you're afraid. God knows that you need to be loved. God knows that you need to feel like somebody cares. God knows that, that you need to, you know, you need this. So desperately, your children need this. And you need to feel that genuine, pure love and comfort. Things may be going well for you right now, and that's great. But they can change in an instant. Time is the great equalizer. And the scars that we carry from the loved ones that we've lost those wounds, they, they really don't heal. The pain fades away over time, but from time to time, it comes back. And it hurts. And God knows that. God knows the pain you go through. He knows the things that you understand and you don't understand. He knows your frustrations. He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. And he knows everything you've ever done to hurt someone, to sin, to disobey the law. In whatever case, God knows this. And he knew what you would do from the day you were born until the day you pass away. And he sent Jesus Christ to pay the price for you so that you could come to Jesus and receive him and receive mercy and that God would see you through the blood of Jesus and he would forget your sins and he would throw your sins as far as east is to west and you would begin a new life a real life you know you would be guaranteed that you would not perish 
eventually your body will, will die. But you yourself will not perish. And what's interesting is, is it also guarantees us, the Lord also guarantees us, the Bible guarantees us, and the Bible is actually the living word of God. That we will rise again. That the Lord will raise us up from the dead. And we're guaranteed that. It says, the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, this is what God has for us. The moment we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become joint heirs with Jesus. We become joint heirs of the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdom, you know, of the Lord's kingdom. We become joint heirs. Now, that's true wealth. Those are true riches. Those are things that will last forever. The money that we make, the houses that we build, the lands that we own, the cars that we own, they'll all rust. It'll all go away. And when we die, We get a six-foot hole in the ground, in a box, or we get cremated. And we can't take any of those things with us. Not even the clothes on our back, not even our favorite shirt. And we don't get to watch our favorite TV show anymore. We don't get to go, you know, out to the lake that we enjoyed so much and take our boat and go fishing. Somebody else gets our boat. Somebody else gets our money. Somebody else gets our house. And what happens to us? It's a good question, isn't it? What will happen to you? Will you just die and no longer exist? Your body buried in the ground in a box? which is set inside a vault and sealed, or your ashes get spread out over the ocean or spread out over your favorite hunting spot, or put on a mantle somewhere. And this whole time, where are you at? Think about that for a minute. You're either gonna be in one or two places. You're either going to be in heaven or you're going to be in hell. Which would you prefer? This is the question you need to answer because in your heart, you know that this message is the truth. In your heart, you know that Jesus Christ is real. In your heart, you know that Jesus Christ is alive. Just look in your heart and be quiet for just a minute and listen because the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you right now. See, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. All men. That includes you. That includes you. Isn't that exciting? You're included. You can be forgiven. You don't have to die and go to hell. You don't have to pay the piper. 
It's already paid for you. The price has been paid. When Jesus was on that cross and he died, he said, it, it is finished. These words, it is finished, mean paid in full. Your debt was paid in full. Your debt was paid in full. And not only that, but when he gave up the ghost and he physically died, he went to hell. In our place. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead. A real, living, flesh and blood person who was alive and was dead and is alive forevermore. God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And Jesus Christ walked and talked to his disciples. And over 500 people saw him. And he performed so many different miracles and so many different things after his resurrection that there were not enough books in the world to contain it. And he did this for us. He defeated death for us so that death could no longer take us. See, hell was not created for mankind. It wasn't created for you. It wasn't created for me. It was created for Satan and his angels. And Jesus Christ went there for our sakes. And on the third day, he took the keys of hell and death out of the hands of Satan. So that those of us who say yes to him, those of us who make him the Lord of our life, those of us who choose Jesus, who choose life, would be born again and would receive his blood, you know, for the remission of our sins, for the forgiveness of our sins. So you can be forgiven. And you can be free. That doesn't mean through your life that problems won't arise. Because they do. And it doesn't mean in your life that you won't make mistakes. Because you will. But what it means is, is we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous, who intercedes for us, who steps up and says, I died for that. I paid the price for that. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He intercedes for us on a daily basis. And he does not want you to perish. He does not want you to go to hell. He's not walking around behind you with a scorecard going, well, you did this and you did this and you did this and you did this. Or waiting behind the next tree, you know, for you with a baseball bat going to whack you in the head. He's not an ogre. God is love. God is love. And this love that we talk about, this unselfish love, this is the God that we serve. And this is the God who is reaching out to you saying, Come, let us reason together. 
Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. This is the God who said, but he commends his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he tells us, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So today, right where you're at, right now, the Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It says, for with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now, right where you're at, just pray this prayer with all your heart to the Lord. To say, dear Father in heaven, I come before you right now. And I admit to you that I am a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me for my sins. And I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior. I'll live my life for you. And Jesus, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Thank you for my salvation, and thank you for paying the price for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, and you received Jesus Christ into your heart, the Holy Spirit came in with your spirit, and you were born again. Take your Bible and read the book of John. That'll get you a solid foundation in the faith. And get into a good Bible-believing church. And ask the Lord to put you where He wants you to be. And thank you for joining us as we follow Him wherever He leads.